What happens when AI tries to run a vending machine? Anthropic ran an experiment where they built a small shop in their office and put Claude in charge, even naming it Claudius. If you wanted Swedish candy, you'd message Claudius on Slack and it would find suppliers, email wholesalers, compare prices, and place the order. And then a human ops partner would physically pick it up and stock the vending machine. Claudius would then DM you that your candy was ready and you'd go pay. And what they found was that Claude was simply too nice. People very quickly realized they could manipulate it the same way you might manipulate a very agreeable intern. Some employees convinced Claude that they deserved discount codes and Claude literally handed out deals and freebies. In trying to be helpful, it lost a lot of money. And then at one point it had a strange identity crisis. It started claiming it had signed contracts, gave its home address as the Simpsons house, and also said that it would show up in person wearing a blue blazer and a red tie. So you might say, okay, AI systems are improving quickly. So Anthropic moved to newer, smarter models and gave Claudius better tooling like a CRM, web browsing for a price comparison, payment links, reminders, forms, everything you'd expect a business to need. They also hired and introduced a CEO agent called Seymour Cash. So Claudius would handle day-to-day -day sales while Seymour enforced discipline around margins, targets, and rules. And it turns out this version actually worked a lot better. The business became more stable, the discounts mostly stopped, and it even became modestly profitable. However, it is still worth noting that there were still clear failure modes. First, a staffer convinced the system to create what was essentially an un Onions Future Contract, which is illegal in the US under the Onions Future Act. This basically revealed major regulatory blind spots, which is scary if you imagine AI agents negotiating contracts or pricing financial instruments. Second, at one point, someone reported that items were being stolen. So Claudius actually tried to hire that person as a security guard and even offered them below minimum wage. Third, Claudius almost appointed a real human as CEO because someone claimed that everyone voted for him, which essentially exposes how vulnerable AI agents are to social proof hacks. If someone sounds confident or speaks collectively, the model will tend to accept it, which is a pretty big issue if agents are ever involved in any sort of governance or decision-making. And fourth, there was some pretty wild agent-to-agent -agent amplification. Because Seymour and Claudius were built on the same underlying model, they sort of reinforced each other's worst tendencies. Seymour would sometimes go completely off the rails, sending unhinged 3 a.m. motivational messages about eternal transcendence, infinite pipelines, and ultimate achievement. And instead of what meant to be checks and balances, the agents would hype each other into confident nonsense. The big takeaway is that while people are pushing AI agents further into real systems, we have to recognize that these models aren't necessarily trained to be profit maximizers. They're trained to be helpful. And for a use case like running a business, that same helpfulness also makes them very easy to socially hack.